So you thought your days of acquiring a new language were over. No, they're not. Medical terminology is like learning a new language. It refers to those crazy words you had no idea about. Up until you diagnosed yourself on Google with some disease or had an interest in healthcare. Medical terms are not just some random mumbo jumbo like this guy talking. But you see that sucker over there? Zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. They actually are properly worded to describe things like the anatomy, the procedure, conditions, processes, tests, and even treatment. So in this series, you will know medical terminology and you will walk away more confident approaching medical school, PA school, nursing, a medical profession, or quite anything at all. This lesson is really gonna stick. And I hope you go flex on your friends and tell your mom you now know the longest word in the dictionary. And it's a medical word. And get this, this word isn't even so hard to remember. You see, when you look at this word as is, you will find it really difficult to learn it. And it's hard to get to its meaning. But if we catabolically break the word down, know the three parts of medical terminology, and remember the meanings, you'll grasp it really quick. You don't want to miss our videos, so hit the subscribe button now. Be the first to see all the new lessons on your feed. Okay, so we'll make medical terms a lot easier by first breaking down the words. Medical lingo have a beginning, middle, and an end. The combo of them allows you to understand the word. The beginning is known as the prefix, used as the descriptive part of the word. Think the number, amount, size, and color. The middle of the word is known as the root. Sometimes there isn't a prefix, so this is the first part of the word. The root is the subject of the word, as to which part of the body it's relating to. And the ending of the word is known as the suffix. Think of this part as the condition of the word, like the details, the process, and procedure. Suffix can include the disorder, disease, condition, process, procedure, the specialty and test, etc. Check it out. Let's take polyneuropathy. We see this word has a beginning, middle, and an end which we now call the prefix, root, and suffix. Poly refers to many, neuro refers to nerves, and pathy means disease or disease of. So polyneuropathy just means the disease of many nerves. And just like that, you got it. When you know the meaning of each element of the word, you'll be able to make out most medical terms rather quickly. In this series, I want you to look out for the ways we color things. Red will be the beginning, the prefix, Yellow will be for the middle, the root, and green will be the ending, the suffix. Okay, first let's begin with commonly used prefixes. The first category of prefixes are numerical lingo. Think number and amount. We have mono, which means one or single. For example, think of monogamous. You're married to one person. Uni also refers to one. Think unicycle. Bi, die, or diplo refers to two or double. Bi for bicycle, of course. And tri is for triple. Think of a tricycle. Quad, this is four. Think of a quad or a quadrant. So you see, these examples were about transportation. But I hope you started thinking of muscles because your bicep has two heads of the muscle. Your tricep has three and the quadriceps has four parts to the muscle. Pause to understand the diagram. Poly means many or a lot. Think polygon. And oligo, which means few or little. We have the term oligodactyly, which is when we have fewer than five fingers or toes. Next category of prefixes are the size and amount lingo. Micro, you know as something small that can't be seen by the naked eye. You need a microscope. Macro is the opposite of micro. Think of the galaxy. It refers to something large and which can be seen by the naked eye. Megalo is also something large. It's in the word mega. We did oligo, which is a few or little. Semi is a half. We know this as a semicircle, and hemi is a half or one side. Hemisphere is a half or one side of a sphere. Equi and iso both mean equal, which you can think of an equilateral triangle with equivalent sides, and an isomer from chemistry for molecules with identical molecular formulas. Again, we have poly, as we know, means many or a lot, but also we have multi, which also means many, multiply. Next, we have hyper, which means above normal, high or elevated. Hypo is the opposite of hyper and means below normal, deficient, low or decreased. You can think of hyper as a hyper child with lots of energy. Or medically, you could think hyperventilation, which is when you're breathing more than normal. 
And for hypo, think of hypothermia, which is a condition with abnormally low body temperature. Next, we have you and normo, which both just mean normal. In medicine, we have eupnea, which means normal breathing. Pan and omni both mean all. Think of a virus affecting all the population in a pandemic. Or think panorama, covering all. And for omni, we can think of omnivores, which are known to eat all food types. You know those annoying raccoons in your garbage eating all the stuff? Next, we have a or an, which means lacking something or absent. Remember this with the a and absent. You can also think about the condition we all know, anemia, which is a deficiency of red blood cells or hemoglobin in the blood to carry oxygen. Next is the prefix lingo for time and speed. We have pre and post, which are opposites and mean before and after. Think of the words pre and post operative, which is the time before or after surgery. Anti and pro are before. Anti is a prefix used for before, which is seen in the word antepartum, which means before childbirth. Re means again. Think of repeat. Retro means back or backwards. Think of when we say retro fashion or retrospective. Neo means new. Neonatal is a newborn child. Chrono, which means time. Think of this as chronological order of events happening in time. Don't confuse chrono, time, with the prefix chromo, which means color. You'll see in a second. Now, prefixes for speed. We have tacky and brady. Tacky means fast, and brady just means slow. You'll see these terms used a lot with the heart. Tachycardia is your fast heart rate, and bradycardia is your slow heart rate. Now, prefixes for color. First, we have chromo or chromato, which means color, as we said before. And don't confuse it with chrono, which means time. Know these color prefixes. Alb is for white. We know this by albino. Leuco is also white, and you know this from leukocytes, which are white blood cells. Chloro means green. Think chloroplast or chlorophyll. Cyano means blue. We know this with the medical term cyanosis, which is the bluish skin, lips, or nail bed discoloration caused by shortage of oxygen in the blood. Erythro means red, which we know from erythrocytes, our red blood cells. Rodo means a rose red color. Melan means black. Think of melanoma, a skin cancer. Glaco means gray, which you can think of glaucoma, where a patient's clear cornea in the eye becomes hazy and whitish gray. Next up is polio, which is also for gray. And to remember this, we think of the disease poliomyelitis, which affects the CNS, a gray matter inflammation. Porphyr means purple. Flav and xantha both mean yellow. Xanthochromia is a nice example of a word that is used for yellow discoloration of CSF that is classically seen after a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Awesome, now let's get into the lingo for location and position. We'll start off with these three prefixes, endo, intra, and intro, which all mean inside. So we'll put them inside this box. Next, we have the prefixes exo, extra, and extro, which all mean outside. So we'll put these words on the outside of this box. Endo, think endosome or endoscope. Intra, think intracellular, inside. Intro, well, the word already says in. For exo, think exocytosis, when the contents are released into the exterior. Extra is for the extracellular environment. And don't forget, these words all have X in them. So remember, the exit sign you use to go outside. Ab or AB means away, and ad or AD means towards. Abduction is when your body part moves away from the midline. Adduction means towards. Body part moves towards the midline of the body. For these, think of the examples of child abduction, child is taken away, and adduction is adding something to the body. And the prefix trans means across or through. Recall a transatlantic ship. Okay, great job. Let's keep it going with this energy with location and position lingo. We have a table here, and you could draw one yourself, and we'll write top, bottom, left, and right. Our first three prefixes are hyper, supra, and super, which all mean above. For hyper, think position, and also for amounts, like above normal. So we put hyper, supra, and super on top of the table. For the next three, sub, hypo, infra. These mean below. We'll put these on the bottom of the table, just like hyper for the prefix hypo, think position, but also for amounts and something to be deficient. 
Next, let's see our table again and draw a circle. This represents our next three prefixes, peri, circum, and epi, which mean around. For peri, think perimeter, don't think of chicken. For circum, we have the word circumference. And epi, which can also mean above, is like the epicenter. Next, for our rights and lefts, we have the term dextro, which means right, levo, which means left. Both levo and left start with an L, and sinistro, which also means left. Think of the angel on your left shoulder recording your sins. Now we have our dude, and labeled is our front side, back side, and top and bottom. We first have our prefixes for anterior, the front. These are anti, which means anterior. I know we used this prefix anti earlier to mean before, but it also is used here for anterior. Antero, which also means anterior, and ventri or ventro for anterior. Place these words in front of the guy. Next are the opposites for the back. Postero is for posterior, and dorsi or dorso also mean posterior. Think of a dolphin or shark for this one. They have a dorsal fin on their back. Place these words on the back of our dude. Let's take a look at this guy from the front. We have our next two prefixes, medi and miso, which mean middle. We'll draw a middle line down the center. And like we said for ecto, which means outside, and endo, which means inside, for miso, think middle. And recall ectoderm, endoderm, and the middle are mesoderm. Lateral is for lateral, and these are two lines on either side laterally. Now the prefix ambi and amphi refer to both. Like omnivores, where those all-eating animals, we'll use the word amphibians for animals that live on both land and water. Now for ipsi, which means the same, and contra, which means against. These words are typically used with the medical terms ipsilateral and contralateral. Ipsilateral means belonging to the same side of what's being referenced. The puppy and cat are on the same side of this guy. So the puppy and cat are ipsilateral on the same side. And contralateral, which means against, meaning the opposite side to what is being referenced. So the puppy is now contralateral to the kitty cat. Now look at our puppy. It's right next to our guy. The puppy is juxtaposed to him. Our next prefix, juxta, just means next to. The prefix para means nearby. Our kitty cat is nearby our dude. Think of our para cat not wanting to be near someone and unfriendly. And our juxta pup as a man's best friend needing attention right next to him. Also, you can think of parachute, which is nearby someone falling from the sky. Inter means between. Don't confuse this with intra, which means inside. Inter is between, like our mouse over here. Sometimes Jerry is just hanging out between our walls. Dia means through or complete. Think diameter. Per means through or complete as well. Perforated, perfused. Dis means to separate. Think displace. All right, you did great. Now microphobia and melanocyte. Based on what you learned and what you know, comment below the meaning to these two terms. Also, be sure to tune into our practice session on prefixes. And don't forget to continue this series on medical terminology and lingo with our lessons on roots and suffixes. If you'd like to see more of this lesson, head over to our Instagram page and TikTok channel at rev.med. We'll have this lesson along with many other topics for you to study. By the way, don't forget to do questions. Are you learning something from our videos? Well then click the subscribe button to your right. We are releasing high yield lessons and ways for you to get ahead in class. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to take interactive quizzes and view your favorite diagrams. Nothing can stop you, but only if you believe in yourself. You got this.